Okay, now part two of soccer queries. Let's continue with accessing variables in soccer queries. So you can put a variable like this in a soccer query in your Apex code. So what is a variable? It's a variable where the value of this can change. So for, exa for example, you can say the variable is a string, right? It's target department and it's, it's Wingo. So if we do that, we are going to get a record, a record or a contact which will um, return Wingo. Okay, so let's, let's go to our developer console. Let me close all the stuff from the previous um, example. Let me open, open again. Let's open the contact object, all right? So, like that. So we have these fields, the contact fields here. So let's go back to our example. So we create a tech contacts variable, which is an array of contact or a, a list of contacts, so to speak. And we put the result of this query into there, right? Put the results from here into there. So what this basically do is if I do a query, will this work? No, it will not work. But I'm just going to explain it to you. So mm, that looks bad. Let me just go like that. Okay. So select first name and last name, which is the field here. Let me sort it by name. So select the first name here, right? We have the last name of the contact here, where the department, the department here, right, equals a variable. Target department. Well, you can't, you can't use it or try it here. But if you say it's Wingo, it says right Wingo, and we execute. We have Carol Ruiz, right? So basically, that dot. Uh, that colon, not semicolon, this is a colon, and then variable name, it will be replaced with Wingo, which is declared here, a string. So basically you can put a dynamic variable, so the value changes with whatever defined here, okay? So that's basically that. So let's move on, querying related records. So select the name of the account name because it's from account right from account select the name of the account but then you want to also select the last name from the contacts object with an s here right because it's a child object of the account this is important an s is a plural okay Select last name from contacts, like that, from account, from the account object where name is SFDC computing. Let me just copy that so we can give it a row. Let me just close this and execute. So select name and then comma, the next column, right? The next column I want to see here is the last name from the contacts from account where name is SFDC computing. So if I execute boom, see, we have one contact, the last name is Ruiz, right? What if I add another one from here? So if I go back to my playground, SFDC computing, right? SFDC, what is the name again? I forgot. Yeah, SFDC computing. So, what is SFDC computing? Oh, here we go. So, SFDC computing. We have one contact, right? Let's make a new one. Let's name it um, Samuel Ruiz, 
right? Or not the last name, Samuel Barn or whatever. I'm just making things up. Okay, Samuel Barn and save it. So now we have Samuel Barn as our second contact for the account SFDC computing. So if I go back to my query here, right? We will have last name Ruiz and Barn, okay? Execute again. Did I, did I run it? Let me just close this guy, okay? And execute again. There. So SFDC computing, last name Barn and then last name Ruiz. How does it look? Why does it look weird, right? Because then you have to parse it on your code further like this. Back to our trail. So that's how you query it. And then um, down below, we're going to discuss how you can parse it or get it or actually here. Right? Yeah. So let's copy this whole thing. Okay. And we are going to talk on the developer console. I'm going to go control E, which is our execute anonymous window. Open this up. See what's going on here. Delete the whole code from before there. So an account, an array of account accounts with contacts. We are doing a circle. Select the name of the account, select the first name, the last name from the contacts, okay? From account where name is SFDC computing. Now we are going to get the child records. So this is how you're going to parse it, okay? The CTS variable is a contact array, the type, and it equals the the first element, zero, element zero, you have you just have to know this. I don't think I can explain the basic of programming, but if you're a developer, you would know an array. And then this is account with contact, the first element, and then dot contacts will get all the contacts here. All right. And then you, you basically loop through it if you want to loop through it, or you can just pick the first element. Okay, so system debug like that. But if I want to do another one, because we have two contacts now, right? So if I, let me just execute this one and give you how it looks like. Okay, this is the log of that code. If I click debug only, see debug. Name of first associate contact is Samuel Barn, right? If I close this and I go back to control E, and then I say, name of the second associated contact is element one, which is the second element, right? Well, that's pretty lame. You have to do a loop. What if there's a thousand contacts? You don't want to, you have to loop through it, right? Do a, do a loop, which we will do next. So if I execute this, we have two now. And I uh, click debug only there. See? Name of first associate contact is Samuel Barn. Name of second associated contact is Carol Ruiz. How does that happen? Oh, I want to control E myself here. So basically, it's accessing the CTS array, which is this, right? Which is this. So it's all link, right? This is going to here, and then it's it's, it's assigned to CTS, and then you're getting the first element, and then this, the second element, it starts always from zero, right? So you get how you can access those stuff. Now you can just play on your own. Now let's flip back here. What about this guy? The same thing, it's just the other way around, right? Let me just copy this, copy that, and, and then paste. So contact array, CTS, now it's the other way, select account dot name from contact where first name is Carol and last name is Ruiz, right? And then contact, let's name this Carol, the variable name is Carol, which is a contact object, is CTS dot zero. Well, this is actually wrong, CTS dot one now, right? If I say, um, this is going to be Samuel, right? So Carol is that. And I'm going to also make another one, Sam, 
which is zero. Oops, Sam, which is zero over here. Right, element, the first element, this is the second one. String account name, well, account name one, carol.account name, sure. And then another string, just for a pretty simple example here, account name two, Sam account name. Oops, come on. All right, Sam dot account name here, right? CTS. So that's how it's linked together, right? So account name one. This is account name one is actually Carol, yeah. And if I go another debug here, Sam's account name is account name two, which is this, right? Sam is Sam, the first element. Carol is the second element. Let's execute, baby. Oopsie, list index out of bounds. Out of bounds? Am I out of bounds? What do you mean? Select account name. Oh, where? You know, because there's a where, there's only one there. Let's just see, let's just say where nowhere. You know, not nothing. I want everybody. Boom. Otherwise, you will just select Carol Ruiz, right? Now I want to select everybody. Well, everybody, hmm, from contact, where account dot name equals SFDC computing, right? Because we actually have otherwise which account is going to be messed up, right? So, so, so where the account, this is the filter where the account name equals SFDC computing, which we have two counts and then we say boom. Boom. Carol's account name is, well, both is F SFDC computing. Well, that's how it works, all right? That's an example. So I'm gonna close this guy, close this guy, back to our trail. And then, yeah, basically we can do a for loop like this. Let's copy and talk about this guy. Control E, and then delete all of that and paste the new one. So we are going to insert a new account, new account name for loop one, for loop two, for loop three. So this is going to create three new account, the name for loop one, for loop two, for loop three, right? And then we declare two integer variable, i and j, right? And then we are looping through this for the account the account array, which is TMP here, and then a colon, right? So you actually query, query, do, do a circle, and put this result into this TMP variable. Get the records and put it here. Get the record and put it here. Get the record and put it here. Now you can access this TMP from here j equals tmp dot size the list or the array size which is three because there is three records the size would be three right so this should have contained three records because three accounts so assert equal check is three equals three three equals j j is three because the size of the array is three because three just inserted and then we after we insert it we query it because we want to check it, okay? If we are going crazy or not. <laughs> you got it so far, right? Not confusing, all right? So, now we are going to assert equals um, one equals I. I this is going to be wrong, right? Since a single bus can only hold up to 200 records and only three records should, be, should have been returned, the loop should have executed only one. All right, so let's see and execute this baby. All right, so there we have it. So next we are going to do the hands-on challenge together on the next video. I'll see you on the challenge. 
hit that subscribe button and explore new trailhead grounds and learn to implement the most useful and popular apps on the Salesforce app exchange. And do yourself a favor, like this video and you'll be surprised on how much more you understand when watching this same video after liking it. Don't take my word, watch this one more time after you like the video and see it for yourself. Bada bing, bada boom.